What is your dream game? A combination of your favorite gaming experiences? A modern interpretation of a nostalgic classic? Game developers often have such a game running in their mind, with it all too frequently never becoming a reality, forever lost. And I've had that same dream too. Today, I'm starting the journey to create my dream game. I just need to pick what game engine I'm gonna build it in. But first, let me set the scene a little bit. I love all types of games. Zelda, Civilization, Half-Life, Dark Souls, and there are different reasons to love each of those experiences. For me, a big part of gaming lies in the strategy. And growing up, a big source of that feeling of excitement came from sports. My favorite, football. I was able to live out that passion through video games, specifically the Madden series. And while I love the Madden series, there's a lot of frustration surrounding the game. Arcade gimmicky gameplay focused on collectathons and microtransactions have turned a game built in a tradition of simulation gameplay, i.e. if it's in the game, it's in the game, into a squeeze as much money as you can from the gamer through borderline gambling and broken game logic. So my dream is to build the game that I know Madden can be. So my first step is to determine what engine is going to serve as the foundation for this game, codenamed Gridiron. I've narrowed it down to two engines, the Gato engine and Unreal Engine 5. So I've decided to make a prototype in both engines. In Gato, I'm going to make a 2D version and in Unreal, a 3D version. The scenario is to have a player act as a ball carrier and simply be chased by multiple AI defenders. I'll begin with the 2D version in the Gato engine. When creating my project, I'm actually going to go with the mobile because a 2D version might be more compatible with less powerful devices and increase the market of potential players. And while it's a little early to think about how rich I'm not going to get with this game, it's important to think ahead. My focus for this prototype is going to be creating a controllable player that will have some top-down movement with acceleration and friction that will then be chased by defenders until they reach the player. Components like speed, acceleration, and friction are important because those variables will likely be exposed to a future player-based rating system. Sport games typically use rating systems to differentiate the playing ability of different players. They essentially create more authenticity in the game. So I know it's important to identify potential areas where these ratings can manipulate gameplay. My first step will be to create a basic player scene, and I've decided to just use a simple 2D circle mesh to represent the players. Prototypes are for testing the possibilities of gameplay and not necessarily game art. Whether the player is a circle or a fully realized animated sprite won't change whether or not I can get the defenders to chase my player, so there's no reason to spend time on the art. After adding my circle, my input maps, and a simple movement script, I have a movable player with exposed variables for speed, friction, and acceleration. For my defenders, I'll actually just use the same scene and script and use a setting in the script to determine whether the player object is a ball carrier or defender. Now in a full 11v11 game, this would need to be much more advanced, but this setup will work for what I'm doing right now. With multiple players on the screen, I should probably add a way to identify who is who, so I'll add a little jersey number to my player scene. With my defenders and players in place, I need a way to make the defenders chase my player. I can do this by using the same movement script of my player, but by setting the direction and velocity to the position of the player scene on each tick. So I'm happy with that chasing mechanic, but I know that the way it currently works would not be acceptable within the context of a football game. In football, players don't simply run at the ball carrier. Players move so quickly that they would end up just running behind them. Defenders must anticipate where the player is going to be and then close once they are close enough. So I need to adjust the XY location being used by my defenders. I can do this by getting the current position of the ball carrier and the position during the last tick comparing the two and then determining where the ball carrier will be if they continued at that velocity after a certain amount of time. I've even added this little movement predictor to show how that location changes as the player moves. With the change, now the defenders take a better angle when chasing the player, making it more difficult to avoid them. After adjusting some player speeds according to position and adding more defenders, I have a very basic visualization of a swarm of defenders running after the ball carrier. The proof of concept is there, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. It just needs a little bit more 
flare. With a 2D prototype created, it's time to move into Unreal and add another dimension. My approach was going to be very similar to the 2D prototype, or so I thought. The player setup was simple enough, largely because the third person character already exists in Unreal. I just needed a little tweaking to move the camera and keep it behind the player and I quickly had a player pawn set up. After moving on to the defender actors, I soon realized that the proper way to approach the chasing mechanic was not through the manual coding, but through the AI system. I'm going to be completely honest, my AI coding experience is pretty lacking, so there's going to be a lot of new information during this process. I set up a blackboard, behavior tree, and AI controller for my defender. Using the move to technique to identify the player pawn, the AI controller instructed my defender to move to the location of my pawn and it created a pretty convincing chasing effect. However, the same issue I had in Gato, where the defenders were essentially chasing behind the player, was showing up again. In fact, it was even more pronounced. And while the move to command updated the location every tick for the AI, giving it a location only made the defender move to the initial location only. I tried the same technique of a movement predictor, but the move to command would only take an actor and I was trying to use a static mesh and child actor in my player actor, meaning the defender just ignored my pawn. Finally, by using an AI perception component and the node request controller prediction event, I could tell my AI defender to predict the future location by time of my pawn. This request would occur on every event tick and then I could update my move to location whenever the AI perception component received new information. With this setup, my defender finally took a better angle when chasing the player. Now, multiple defenders still bunched up and for some reason ignore me when I jump, but I got them in pursuit and that's a win. But just like my 2D prototype, I need a little bit more flair. The added bonus of working in Unreal and using the physics-based characters is that variables like speed, acceleration, friction are already built into the system. So with some quick math and determining the top speed of an NFL player last year, I can adjust the speed of my player, and that's really fast. The movement will definitely need some refining. But I have to say, watching my little pawn guy run down the sideline of a football field, and it's Kind of amazing how quick it is to set up something like this when 20 years ago this would have been pretty unthinkable. And I'm kind of beginning to see this dream game come into focus a little bit. So after working in both engines and getting a better feel for what might be possible, I'm still a little torn on what overall approach I want to take. Should I go classic and focus on a solid player experience with less bells and whistles? Or should I go for the Hail Mary and embrace the modern gadgets and gizmos of Unreal? to make a truly modern football game. Let me know in the comments which prototype and engine you would pick for the dream game. I'm gonna think a little bit more on it and make a decision in the next devlog. Until then, check out what happened last time I worked with the Gato engine and Unreal by porting my Unreal project to the Gato engine.